la la. Ooh, this is so delicious. You guys need to smell this goodness. Mm, it's amazing. Hi, my loves, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite fragrance notes and one of the most hard to find in the entire planet. Oud. I get so many questions about Oud and I've been wanting to do this video forever. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard about Oud before or if you're already a super fan like I am. I am obsessed with Oud. For a lot of people, Oud can be pretty intimidating, especially if you've never tried it before. I would say it's an acquired taste, so the more that you use it, the more you crave it, you desire it, you become hungry for it. It's weird. It's really, it takes over you. <laughs> so here is a super fun fact. Oud is actually described as liquid gold in the fragrance industry because it's one of the most expensive ingredients ever. I actually went to a fragrance expo about three or four months ago and a guy, I was like, show me your most expensive oud. And he goes behind the little like stand. He pulls out his briefcase, opens it, and then inside he opens another little thing and another little thing. Inside there's like a tiny little piece of oud and he's like, this is over a hundred thousand dollars. I like froze. So there is so much information about oud. Honestly, I could spend an entire day just talking about all the different types of oud and all the details, but today we're going to just stick to the basics and we're going to give you an oud 101. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with some of the modern day oud fragrance brands, brands like Gucci, Tom Ford, Lancome, Giorgio Armani, you know, the list goes on and on. But truthfully, oud is not anything new. It's been around for centuries, if not like thousands of years. There are even references in Chinese history that there was oud being extracted for incense in central Vietnam in the third century. So we can see how it goes way, 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 way back. But it is the Middle Eastern and Arab culture specifically that has really made oud oils a prized possession and part of pretty much a daily ritual. Growing up as an Arab American, in the States I didn't really get exposed to oud much, but I remember visiting Iraq, Jordan, Iran, and then when I moved to Dubai, Dubai, just falling in love with Oud. Oud in Dubai was just like a game changer for me. I saw so many different souks, different shops. There's different types of Oud all over the place in different formats. It was just like explosion of Oud. For me, Oud really makes me feel like an Arabian goddess. I feel like Jasmine. I feel like it takes me back and it just there's something so special to it. Oud actually means wood in Arabic, so the translation of oud is wood. And oud, the fragrance ingredient oud, comes from a very specific tree called agar wood. I always have trouble saying it. It's most often found in parts of India and parts of Vietnam, Indonesia. It's a really tricky, complex process to create the actual oud oil, which is why it's such a luxurious, exclusive, rare fragrance ingredient and you're actually considered very lucky and very blessed if your tree actually produces the oud oil. So I'm just going to show you guys what a typical piece of oud looks like. This is a piece of oud that you burn. With the wood chips that you burn, they soak it with other fragrances and other ingredients to make it into this special beautiful wood that smells very unique and different. They're absolutely beautiful. It is a very complicated process. It is not easy, trust me. But but it's really, really special. And that's what we call bukhur here, when you burn oud on charcoal or even on electric burners. What happens with oud, for it to become this special, incredible, expensive oud, this argarwood tree needs to be infected. And as a result, the tree produces mold and then this resin, this kind of like syrupy, weird material that then they can extract from the oud to produce this incredible fragrance. We can also cut up the wood into chips and we can put resin onto it and add our own fragrances and really saturate it to create oud that you burn for fragrance for the house. My God, it smells so good. <laughs> so to extract the oud fragrance from the oud, there's a distillation process. And I've actually seen this in one of the most incredible oud factories in Dubai, Ejmal. They showed me how they get all the resin out of the tree. And this process goes multiple times. And each time it's the strongest the first time. And each time they keep getting more and more out of the tree, which is really incredible. And then they get that resin. And then they also go through another process to turn it into the oil that we put onto our body and that they add into fragrances for perfume. I think that one of the reasons why oud has become so popular and so coveted in the fragrance industry and amongst consumers is because it has one of the 
most powerful sillage. Sillage basically means the trail of how far your fragrance goes. So think about it like when you fill up a room or an elevator. A small sillage would be like, okay, you have to get close to that person to smell it. A very long sillage or a big sillage is like they walked past you, the room still smells like it when they left. And typically with people who wear oud, natural oud, it's really powerful. I have friends where I hug them and after I've hugged them, my entire body smells like oud and I'm like, ooh, it just smells so amazing. If you are an oud beginner, take caution. I would not go heavy because if you put on too much too fast, you might actually ruin it for yourself. Think about it like when you're trying to get used to a new ingredient when you're cooking like truffle oil, for instance. The first time you have truffle on your pizza, if someone put tons on, you'd probably be like, oh my God, it's just too much and then you probably would never want to smell it or taste it ever again. You really have to take baby steps, put a drop, a tiny drop at a time. You can dilute it with other fragrances and I really find it smells absolutely addictive and delicious. So guys, I'm going to take you on a little oud tour and all of these perfumes from here all the way down across this row over here are all oud perfumes and I'm going to show you some of my favorites. Over here are some beautiful regional brands. This is a classic Tejun Strong, but if you get accustomed to the oud, you're definitely going to love it. Of course, we've got to give some respect to Tom Ford. I love Tom Ford. This is tobacco oud. Just incredible. Love it. Lots of respect. Over here is a perfume by Elisa. This is called Oud, number four essence. I love El Elisa perfumes, they're so beautiful. This is by one of my favorite brands, Michaelis, which I talk about quite a lot. This is called Royal Rose Oud. Just a really pretty, mm, so beautiful. Here we have Oud Asfahan by Christian Dior. I do not know why I bought this bottle. I think I was gifted it, I hope I was, because <laughs> it's definitely very expensive. It's so beautiful. This bottle just makes me feel so happy. <laughs> it's called Oud Jasmine. Of course, I'm gonna love it because I love Jasmine and I love Oud. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. From a cost perspective, this is definitely the most expensive Oud I have. There's only three ml of oil. It was around a thousand dirhams, I believe. So it's around $300. But again, a little drop goes a very long way. So it'll last you a very long time. It's by a brand called Hendel Oud and it's called Makhalit Sheikh Abdullah, which means the mixture of Sheikh Abdullah. Love this one. If you're on more of a budget, this is another brand called Enfasak Tukhun and this is six ml. I don't remember the exact price, but I believe it was probably around 400 dirhams, which is around $100, but it's double the amount and it's also absolutely gorgeous. I also definitely want to highlight Ejmel Oud. Ejmel is one of the most incredible brands. This is one of their ouds. And again, tiniest drop of this baby will last you at least a few days, at least a few showers. You're going to smell delicious. Okay, my loves, I think I'm ooted out for now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna stop for now because there's definitely gonna be a part two. We have only scratched the surface of oud. We'll definitely be covering a lot more in the future, but I just want to give you guys the basics so you're familiar and you can make great oud decisions. So before we finish, as always, I wanna give you guys my quote of the day, and it says, the fragrance is always left in the hand that gives the rose. And I really love this quote because it really ties into the beauty of giving and sharing and fragrance please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel and as always please stay safe and stay kind and stay loved Mwah. i love you guys so much honestly wow beautiful oof so good roja one of the best beautiful beautiful beverly hills oh who's that who that daddy Daddy cool. This is actually an incredible oud that was, I believe, exclusive for Saks Beverly Hills. And this is by the brand Bond NYC, which I love so much. Mm. Ooh. So good. Delicious. This is typically like where we like to put it over here. I usually like to put it in my hair, like I'll put it like rub it on my hands and then like put it in my hair and just like give my scalp a good rub and oh my god when you sweat you just smell like delicious it's a trick i do especially on dates it's really nice when i used to be arab boys <laughs>